Hello, sportsmen. Good news. Winter's not coming for another four months. More good news. We have some ideas how to make ice fishing much more comfortable for you this winter with portable ice shanties. Hey, it's a whole new ball game. You can stay warm and comfortable. Stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with ideas on how you can become a more practical sportsman. So this is how you set up the Luma tent. Well, there's the permanent ice shanties out there. That's one that won't move maybe until spring, but we have our product testers here, Doug Tabor, Charlie Keenan. They are going to be going through a variety of portable ice fishing shelters. I have the advertisements in my hand, folks, and I'm up to my same old tricks, comparing advertising claims to these products. So Doug, why don't we, uh, get into your van here. Actually, he has four of the portable ice shanties in the back. And one of the things we wanted to show you is how small they fit in. The first one is the Fish Trap Deluxe. Now this is made by USL Products. Now that's pretty slick. It has a, on its own sled. Why don't we just set it up right here, guys? Plenty of room here. Put your buckets, whatever. Okay, bucket. so you put your buckets and your gear inside Sit there. Down Sit down like Fairly that. Fairly simple the way this works. And you just flip it over. And there he is. Ha, ha, ha. That's the last we see of Doug Tabor. Can you wave to us, Doug? Oh, John. Okay, you got enough headroom in there? Rods in here. Uh, plenty of headroom for sitting down in here. Yeah, very. Okay. Long. Why don't you flip that back up? That's called the Fish Trap Winter Fishing System. That's an alternative, of course, to the permanent right ones. Okay, now the next one we have. That, by the way, sells for about $200 to $250. Um, $250 to $300, this is, it, of course it depends on where you buy these things. This is called the wind block. Now this says portable fishing shelter, beat the cold in competition every time. It says it sets up in seconds. In fact, it, it claims that it's the best ice fishing shelter you can buy. Okay, well, we'll, we'll let you be the judge of that. Some of these things blow around. This has got a rope on it with a, as you see, that's it's offset the way the hole is drilled in there. What you do is you drill a hole behind you and you drop that down in there and then pull it up to the ice. Push the sled up so it doesn't blow around when you get off it. Okay. You come around here. So this is a, a wind block, sets up in seconds, it says. Open like this. Kicker closed here. Okay, that locks Kicker. those little that babies. That locks that open. You're ready to go. All you need is a hole and a rod. Okay, so you can, you can fish this way or Want to, can it you gets pull down? It's very cold, real cold, and, and you can't. The wind is swirling or something. You can't get out of it. You can pull the front down like that and like zip that, it in. And it zips in. Okay, that's called the wind block. Got again storage in there in the seat. Lock. There we go. Okay, there's two of them we've seen, and, and they're both now. These things you you have to expect to pay a couple hundred dollars for. That was just $250 to $300. Now the third one we're pulling out here is called the Minute Man. Okay, this you can pull out on the ice with uh, skis that are on the bottom. You just have to show one of these guys how you tip that up right there and put the clip in. And that's how the, that's how the skis would be. Uh, you put both of them up and then you can drag it out on the ice. And you don't have to do that, Doug. You can go ahead and put that back. Because once you get out on the ice, you're going to put the skis back down. Now, the Minuteman says, well, it has a whole set of instructions here on how you put it up and take it down. Now, we're going to see if we can do this in a minute or so. So you're right. Of course, you, I guess you don't really need the skis to drag it out, in actually. The depth of the snow. Okay, now go ahead, guys. Start the clock here and see if we can set this minute man up. Now this, this one has a floor in it, which you have to have uh, flat snow. You can't have ice chunks or anything because it could kind of make the, the floor unstable and even break the floor, I imagine. So here's what they're doing. Yeah, get around here, John. You can see on this end. There are aluminum poles that set up on each end. Look at these guys go, <laughs> trying to, to beat well, the clock here. Coming, you know, it makes you a little nervous. 
Okay, now this one has a principle of a rod that goes on the inside between the aluminum frame, these sections. So you can see right here, John, the setup instructions. I got them in my hand and it tells how to do it. And that, okay, you've got that set up. And this one has openings at both ends. Also has, look in here, John, we have windows. If you're tip up fishing, or you just wanna keep an eye on what's going on, you can look through these windows that Velcro down. Now, check this out. While Doug is taking the, those little pieces of wood clip in there, and you would spud or auger your holes right in there and sit in there and fish. And a lot of, course, of times with these, it's, it's, it's better if you do your holes first and then pull the tent over them. And then you don't have all the slush and everything sure. for cutting your holes on them. How they okay. time. Well, they, did, they did pretty good on time. I think, I don't know if, if that's a 60 second minute or minute man meaning in just a few minutes. But now we're going to go over here to Charlie's truck, pull out the next tent, which is the, I believe, the Luma tent. Okay, this Luma tent, it says, it's ad claim that it goes up in a minute, it weighs less than 60 pounds, folds down on its own skis for easy pulling, four to six, four by six floor area on the bottom. Okay, so this is how you set up the Luma tent. It takes really helpful. I don't know if one guy can do it. Well, I think it, was, it could be a one man job. I'm sure if one guy can do it. It's much easier with two. Okay, so the principle here of Velcro, you can see Velcro is very important to these portable shanties. The first thing that's done, I'm not gonna touch it, I'm gonna let you two guys do it, is you put the bottom, bottom, then you wanna pull, I think you wanna pull the canvas out along the bottom, and that's, that holds the bottom in place. Now the top, uh, you gotta, you gotta, un, well, I guess you don't have to. Just click that baby down. Now, which end is the front? Darn quick. That's it. Okay, there's the skis are on the other end, and and there we go inside. Well, in fact, I'll just jump in here. Well, I don't know if jump is the word. Boy, these cold weather clothes. I'm not quite used to this. There are some little fold down shelves in here. Window you can look at to check your tip up. Some hooks to hang lanterns. Uh, slick little deal. That's called the Luma tent. This one is on the higher price range. This is uh, 350 to $450, depending on where you can get a deal. Now, those are, we have right now set up in actually ascending order, I think, of, of size for sure, four portable ice shanties. Now let's go back to one that is made by, yep, the Minuteman right there. Let's go back to the clam. Now this is your own personal one, right, Doug? Yep. Now this is heavier. Uh, this is the... It's not all that heavy. It's kind of bulky, but it's, it's not all that heavy. Okay, but it is plastic all around. It's again got fold down skis that you can do. We don't need to do that because we aren't going to take it very far. Okay, so you can leave them there and drag it? Yeah. Okay, let's just put it out here on the other side of this one. Put your gear on top or would you or do you put your gear? Even gear inside of this too. There's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of room. Let's see when we pop it open here. I don't think I've got anything in there. Maybe mice or something. I'll head out this year. Okay. There we go. It opens up so to put, put quite a bit of stuff in there. Okay, so this I can see we're into a little job here. Yeah, it's uh it takes a few minutes. You got a few poles here. Uh, it isn't too bad. I've done it by myself lots of times well with the kids. Well, let's, uh, let's compress time now and watch these guys put this together. You don't need all those on the inside. So I see this is a, an entire separate unit here. doesn't come attached, you have to put it together. I can see one disadvantage that there might be here is in a wind, a heavy wind, it would be a challenge. In the, in the wind, it is, it is a little bit of a challenge, especially when you're doing it by yourself. Uh, the instructions are pretty good, though. 
Uh, actually, when you're doing it by yourself, you do it from the side and take the side over. You do one side first. I see. So this, but you see the advantage here is, yeah, this is a little bigger than the other now tents. These little cleats are sticking out here. There is a different design on the newer ones. I've had this for a couple years. And there's also big improvements coming for next year to make it a little bit easier. Uh, they realize, all these people do, that things are changing all the time and it's tough sometimes out on the ice to get these. And, and as they get them out and get feedback from fishermen to buy them, they, they make improvements on them. Okay, well this is called the clam. And they have one that's even, even bigger, the clam sleeper. Weighs 195 pounds, but this is called the Clam Classic. Features two windows, two doors, with uh, bi-directional zippers. So you can zip in from the top or the bottom, like that. And inside here, of course, you take the... Now, I did the... I wish I would have done the bi-directional the other way on this one. Can you give me some help on this, Doug? Got it. Pull that up. Because what we'd like to do is get in here and show the, when you have a, an ice shanty that has a wooden floor, which can be an advantage as long as it's flat, you, let's just turn these to the side. Turn them to the side. There we go. And there's where you would fish through right there. And so it's set up a little different than the other one. The one guy fishes two holes on this side, and then if you see on the other side of Fred there, uh, so you sit facing each other, actually, is what you do instead of sitting side by side. Oh, so instead of side by there. side, so you can sit there and yak and right. chew the rag. But this is called, has two windows in it, called the clam. So there we have it. Five different ice fishing shelters here, all portable tents, and we just put this up in a matter of minutes, all five of them. That's an alternative to the shelters that you see out there on the ice that these guys have built at home. Uh, usually drag out with a pickup truck or push it out there with a four-wheeler, something like that. You know, there is one thing nice about uh, these shanties right here. With the regulations now, a lot of lakes, you can't leave a shanty out at night. And those are local regulations usually. Oh, that's know, right. Not Michigan regulations. That's right. There are. Now, here, here's another way to go. See this guy coming in here? You're dragging a uh, minute. Which one is that? The minute, minute man? man? The minute yeah. man. So you drug that out there and set it up just temporarily. Where are your fish? Nowhere. Nowhere? Two bites. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we, I guess we picked the best day to show shanties rather than show ice fishing, yeah. huh? Yeah, exactly. What's your name? Mark. Tyler. From where? Lansing. Okay. And you These are a lot of brass here. I noticed you're really <laughs> pulling back. You didn't set up the skis on the bottom of this. No, they're... There is no skis. This not is, on this, this not model, on huh? this model. Oh, the new models yeah. have skis. Well, but you didn't get any fish. No, nope. but not you know, for about four hours. That warms <laughs> the cockles of my heart because we decided <laughs> not to go fishing today and to show the fishing shanties instead. Nice meeting you, Mark. Hey, take care. Okay. Well, that's the story. Isn't that interesting? One of the five shanties we showed. There it is. He went out and tried it. It doesn't guarantee fish, but. There is a practical sportsman. This is, uh, I think, a relatively easy appetizer to make. These are called smoked salmon crescents. This is from a veteran on our television shows and cook-offs, William Wiswell from Grand Rapids. And you have your lovely daughter, Sarah, right? Mm -hmm. Dig into these. I want to. Have you eaten these before? No. I I had a feeling that was the case. You haven't. You don't feed some of your interest to your family beforehand. Uh, mm. sometimes I like trying it out on friends. Mm -hmm. And but it's getting a little harder because I'm starting to get with what's in it. Well, Sarah, what about this? These are very good. What What makes them good? Um. What can you taste anything in there? You can taste the dough, you can taste the par par Parmesan cheese. It's very good. Yeah, it is, and, and they're soft. In fact, these are some of the ingredients you have. What, just uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, Parmesan cheese, some, you, of course, chop up. You don't use the parsley out of the bottle. No, 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 I like using fresh whenever I can. Chopped onions, <laughs> and these are poppy seeds, which, uh, well, are on top. You can see the little poppy seeds on top here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I see your 
Sarah's going in for more. <laughs> How would you describe it? Put it in a nutshell. Sarah, you want to be an actress someday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is your debut. Describe these. Um, I describe these as very soft, very delicious. Cream cheese and poppy seeds. Okay, that was a that was a technical description. Now give a description, an emotional description. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be an actress, you said. <laughs> So give it with some emotion. What's one word to describe them? Delicious. Okay. <laughs> She's hired. We'll put her on put her on stage. Do you want a copy of that recipe? Hey, it's in the August September issue of the Practical The flood which has brought so much devastation to the Midwest is also spreading the pesty zebra mussel. Before the flood, they were found in Tennessee, and this flood will undoubtedly spread them into many inland waters. Another freak of nature that is working out okay so far is the natural crossing of pink salmon and Chinook salmon in the St. Mary's River. Now, if you catch an unusually large pink salmon in that part of the state, the DNR asks that you bring it in to a biologist to determine if it's a pink salmon or one of the new crosses. A Virginia man, Jarrett Arlo Dean, came across a rattlesnake last weekend. It bit him. He got mad and bit the snake's head off. A few days in intensive care and the swelling in Jarrett's mouth finally went down. Hoo-ah! Tasty. Animal activists demonstrated in Lansing. Well, there were eight adults and a kid. They were protesting the DNR's use of rotenone to poison fish in streams for scientific studies. These animal rights nuts were beefing about the suffocation of fish. And in a related story, the ever-controversial Jane Fonda and Ted Turner, who are selling buffalo meat as a beef substitute, were picketed by animal activists at a buffalo convention Jane tried to tell them that if you're going to save buffalo, there's got to be a market element to it. I say hats off to Jane Fonda for being practical. You know, these animal activists who promote so-called animal rights used to grab the headlines because their cause was politically correct. Now, I never agreed with this whole animal rights movement anyway. The reasons are showing up in the headlines this year. Now, besides these terrorist bombings they've done on animal research facilities, now, rabies are showing up in urban pets. Kittens have become rabid in the city of Lansing. Now, they undoubtedly got rabies from a raccoon or a skunk or a fox. Reason is these predator populations are causing problems, not only for game birds and animals, but now for domestic pets as well. And it's these animal rights people who actually are opposed to domestic pets, in case you didn't know. Dogs and cats are on their hit list, as well as eating meat and using animals for medical research. It's the actions of animal activists that has depressed the fur market. Nobody's trapping predators, and that's why the populations have mushroomed and rabies have spread in the cities. Now, exactly what rights does a rabid animal have? The right to bite somebody? Ah, oh, come on, look what's happening. This animal rights malarkey has gone way too far. That's my opinion. Hey, practical sportsman means a lot more than just a TV show. And I hope you enjoy what we're doing, and I hope you can get outdoors this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. This past week, we fished Lake Erie for walleye with Captain Eddie McMillian. The following day, Captain Ron Levitan took us out for walleye and perch. We'll have these shows on the air in the upcoming season of Practical Sportsman starting the first week in September. Be sure to join me next week for another classic feature, outdoor news, current events, right here, same time, same station, for the Practical Sportsman. Practical Sportsman.